Hello, and welcome to My Tiny Bottles, the project where I'm exploring my grandmother's legacy of miniature liquor bottles one tiny bottle at a time. I'm your host, Tammy Coxon. You know all those internet memes that reference the difference between champagne and sparkling wine, like this great COVID era example? It's only quarantine if it comes from the French region of Courant, otherwise it's just sparkling isolation. Well, as I learned when researching bottle number 15, Asbach or Alt Brandy, we have the Treaty of Versailles to thank us for the rules that gave us that meme. This was the peace treaty signed in 1919, which set the terms for Germany's surrender in World War I. Not a lot of provisions of the treaty are still in effect today, but Articles 274 and 275 live on. These are known as the Champagne Paragraphs, and they prohibited Germany from using foreign designations of origin to describe their own products. Article 275 specifically calls out spirits and wine. This was really the first attempt to establish and protect these geographical indicators. Before that, words like cognac and champagne are just widely used as descriptors, which is why the story of this tiny bottle of Asbach Geralt brandy begins in 1892, when German distiller Hugo Asbach founded a company to make what he described as German cognac. Asbach had trained in France, and he wanted to create a German product that could rival those produced in the cognac region there. He succeeded, albeit using French grapes and French oak barrels. Asbach Earl became the premier German brandy and outsold the French stuff in Germany. When trademarking Asbach Earl in 1908, he came up with the term Weinbrand to describe German brandy, and starting in 1923, that became the official term there. He is also the likely pioneer of another product, those bottle-shaped chocolates filled with booze. Asbach began producing brandy-filled chocolates in 1924, and if you've been following My Tiny Bottles before now, you won't be surprised to know that he did it so he had something he could market to women, who obviously couldn't be seen drinking alcohol in public. Also unsurprisingly, the chocolates took off with both men and women alike, and other alcohol producers soon followed suit and produced their own versions. While still the best-selling brandy in Germany, sales have declined in recent decades. It was a family-owned company, but they sold to United Distillers in 1991 and have been owned by Underberg since 2002. They've been struggling to remake their brand, and they're a little way a victim of their own success, right? Their name combines the word Asbach, the founder's name, with Uralt, which is the German word for ancient. And this association is so ingrained that the word Asbach itself is now used to mean old, which makes it hard to position yourself as new and exciting in the increasingly competitive spirits market. Speaking of old, uh, my best guess on this bottle is from the early 1990s. I'm basing this mostly off the label on the bottle's neck. It has both Asbach and Uralt written there, which is also true of an ad dated to 1991. Whereas bottle examples I can date to the early 2000s, they just say Asbach. And that actually includes this bottle that I picked up a few years ago. You might remember that I was searching for this during the reveal video, and I did finally find it. It's a different blend. It's the Ur brand, not the Uralt. Uh, but I'll talk more about that when I get a chance to taste these with someone. Could you be that someone? I'm always looking for people to explore these bottles with. If you've got an Ospot connection or a connection to any of the other tiny bottles I've unboxed so far, let me know by leaving a comment or sending me a message at mytinybottles.com. As for the rest of you, don't forget to subscribe and follow My Tiny Bottles on all your socials. Cheers.